All right, welcome to this Tobacco University video. Here we're going to be talking about using CRISPR, Cas9, and marker assisted technologies for cannabis breeding. This is kind of a very precise way of way of methodology that's being refined to specifically target certain sequences within a DNA to splice genes out or add genes that growers may be deeming desirable. So first off, what is this CRISPR Cas9? Well, CRISPR CRISPR is short for clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. This is a system that evolved as an adapt uh, adaptive immune response in bacteria and archaea to defend against invading viruses. This is something that occurs in nature. It allows the bacteria to essentially keep a genetic record of invading viral DNA to allow for a speed up in response time to render a virus inactive. So it's actually an evolutionary or genetic kind of improvement for bacteria to be able to recognize foreign viral DNA and counteract it at a quicker rate. This technology, though, can be applied to plants breeding by allowing for specific gene loci to be targeted for gene alteration, responsible for specifically targeting a sequence and adding in genes we may, again, deem desirable. So what's the use for CRISPR? When we're looking at CRISPR, breeding processes that are assisted with CRISPR technologies may benefit from the reduction in the time to develop a new cultivar. It's a really great targeted method for being able to go through the process of gene editing. And as a result, this can allow for a quicker development of a cultivar instead of through traditional breeding. So what are marker-assisted technologies? Well, there's a kind of a couple here that I'll be covering uh, with isozyme variation, uh, RFLP, PCR, and microsatellites. And I'll be at least providing you with a little bit of background, at least a brief overview of each of these within this video lecture. So let's start with kind of where do we get this information from? It's always good to cite your sources. And we see here a reference article that you're welcome to go through and provide you with the reference link to copy the first page and a direct link. You're welcome to go and take a look at this if you want to learn even more information than is presented here. So starting with the first one that I mentioned, isozyme variation. So maybe something you're probably uh, not familiar with per se, maybe something that's not very common, and understandably so, uh, but isozymes are basically protein markers. This technique is based on the uh, principle that uh, allelic variations exist for many different types of proteins. This uses a simple process of making a crude protein extract from some tissue sources, usually leaves that are separated by gel electrophoresis. The disadvantage, though, is a number of isozyme loci that can be um, scored is limited. It's kind of a limiting form of technology, and different source tissues will provide different results, so it may necessarily be repeatable amongst the whole plant. As a result, this is rarely used today in favor of what I'm going to talk about next, RFLPs, which you may still see some instances, particularly old studies, where this was uh, utilized. So those RFLPs, what does that stand for? That's looking at what's called restriction fragment length polymorphism. This is a molecular marker based on differences in, gen in the genomic DNA level. These RFLP markers are defined by a specific enzyme probe combination that identifies one single locus at a time and utilizes agarose gel separation. The disadvantages of using RFLPs is that genomic clones that are represented sequences at random are poor choices as hybridization probes uh, because plant genomes consist of a large percent of repeated sequences. And those repeated sequences can cause issues in the sense that there's not necessarily 100% all unique DNA amongst the whole length. This has not been widely used for hemp compared to other crop species simply because of this uh, evidence that there is a lot of repeat units. So it makes this technique a little less effective. Then we get to PCR, which again stands for polymerase chain reaction, uh, something we might hear about uh, more. We're a common technique, been around for quite a number of years. And this is the restriction digest of genomic DNAs followed by a PCR amplo ampl amplification of the fragments obtained. This uses labeled primers that anneal to the ends of the fragments. The anneal simply means to attach to. Having a variable number of extra nucleotides randomly chosen, so to amplify only a subset of the total fragments is obtained. It's really looking at that targeted kind of genetic sequence. The labeled amplification products are run through a polyacrylamide gel and then are separated. So you kind of go through, you have this long piece of DNA, you're looking for a certain gene. You have these certain primers that are targeting a specific sequence of that whole gene, as we can see right here. We go through this cycle many, many times, generate many copies if that targeted sequence is there. And then we run it through a gel to separate out, to again, visually confirm its its presence or where it may be within that DNA sequence, meaning if there was a lot of products, you're going to see a very darkened bar there, indicating a lot of uh, DNA at that particular base pair um, length. 
Then lastly here, we have something called microsatellites. So what's a microsatellites referring to? Well, these are short sequences of two, three, or more nucleotides that are represented from a variable number of times in a genome. In general, one single locus is identified by each PCR reaction, but the number of alleles that can be identified is very high, as the very variability in the repeated motif number is high in the plant genomes. So only recently identified and used for cannabis, it's kind of like the new and emerging technology, microcellulite markers were the most useful in describing the hemp germoplasm. So as a result from this study showing or indicating that these microsatellites show greater promise, this is what's being considered to maybe be utilized more going forward, at least for cannabis, simply because of the many repeated units that tend to exist. So PCR is still involved, but not just using PCR, utilizing these kind of short sequences, these microsatellites, for example, here, to look for these repeats there. Again, shows a lot of promise looking at hemp and can be a great way to potentially look at breeding cannabis and knowing an understanding of cannabis uh, with greater detail going forward.